Uh, this fantastic session will close the door, uh, sponsored by uh, Microport. Um, I, I've really been looking forward to this session for many, many reasons. Now, one of them is uh, the fantastic faculty we have, and um, you will see why. Now, the topic is, is simply a highlight of the portfolio of Microport, so three different uh, fields um, that are supported uh, uh, in this company and, and some new data and some new exciting uh, insights. It's the Firehawk stent, of course, the Vitaflow valve, and uh, as of recent, the Robocath. So three topics and the objectives uh, were drawn up to learn first about the clinical performance of Firehawk family stent in STEMI patients evaluated by imaging tools. Secondly, the features and benefits of PCI Robot R1, and first clinical trial updates in China, the five-year clinical results of VitaFlow transcatheter aortic valve system. So different thing, three topics, three times discussion. Now, the team is uh, amazing. We've got Peter Smith as a moderator, and he and I were the only ones here in Europe. And just think of it, if you think this has been a long day. We've got Shubo in China, Hyundai Chen, Ling Tao, Mao Chen, and Wei Lu, the chat master. They're all over there, and it's 10.30 in the evening. So, welcome to you. The session ahead, first the robot, then we talk about Firehawk stand in uh, STEMI with a look at, at OCT data, and then finally we hear about the wider flow. And uh, I think you wanted to say something as well before we go. Well, thank you, Andreas, for this uh, beautiful introduction. And um, the first topic will be on robotic PCI. And I can tell you that when I was before the pandemic, I was at the CIT in China. I saw from the Fuwai Hospital the first live case with a robotic PCI. So we have one of the investigators of the robotic uh, PCI in China study online. Xu Bo, who will give us a kind of an update on the program in China. Um, Xu Bo, can you hear us? Thank you so much for your kind introduction. And uh, actually, after the first 10 case by Corindas, uh, we had no clinical use in for a hospital, but uh, two uh, research teams at Fuwai are uh, still working on animal study with a new systems. Hopefully in the future, we will be able to show uh, some cases uh, or data. I'm very interested to see the Professor Yun Dai Chen's data now. Exactly, so Yun Dai Chen will now talk about PCI Robot R1 progress from the China Pivotal study. Okay, so is that? Uh, yeah. Uh... Thank you for uh, inviting and also introduction. I'm Yun Dai Chen from the Chinese Bell General Hospital. And uh, on behalf of the R Evolution China trial investigator, I will present the China Pavalot, uh, Pavalotal study. And uh, 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 this is my, uh, I have a uh, receipt of the research support by Microport and uh, Casport. As you know, the number of the PCI in China has community, uh, continually to grow, uh, the grow rate uh, per year up to the 10 to 20 percentage. And with the extension of the life expectancy, uh, expectancy in China, the number of the PCI in China will reach 2.37 million in two, uh, 2026. And also because of more uh, uh, PCI case and the more complex PCI case, so longer exposure time for the operator should be concerned uh, in the future. And uh, when we talk about the radiation exposure uh, hazards, generally uh, cataracts is uh, more common uh, confined by the, uh, in, for the interventional operators. And also uh, almost uh, 10, uh, 49 a point percentage uh, for the interventional operators are generally reported uh, at least one orthopedic injury, also including cervical, um, cervi uh, cervical spine disease and uh, lumbar spine problem. 
So we I also we uh, find uh, in a brain study also shows the brain and the head left side tumor occurring significantly higher and uh, uh, has been reported for the interventional physicians. And also some data shows uh, long-term low-dose uh, radiation exposure associated with the increased uh, subclinical carotid intima media uh, sickness. So we need uh, more uh, better procedure conditions for the patients and also for the, uh, especially for the um, physicians. And uh, for the robotic PCI, uh, recent uh, 15 years uh, uh, is uh, dramatically increased, uh, developed rapidly. And uh, 2006 uh, in Israel, uh, in the uh, Tampa Medical Center, performed the first in men, enrolled, uh, um, enrolled 18 patients and the clinical success rate 100% and technical, technical success rate is up to 83%. So it's uh, quite encouraged us. And uh, uh, in the Columbia Medical uh, University Medical Center, and uh, in the uh, also uh, performed a small simple volume of clinical uh, first uh, human clinical trial, and uh, also shows uh, operator radiation exposure uh, was low uh, was ninety seven percentage lower, and uh, also uh, two years later, first registration clinical trial in the same uh, center enrolled uh, uh, 164 patients at nine sites, and also the clinical success rate and technical success rate quite higher, and uh, operator uh, radiation exposure also is uh, dramatically uh, decreased. And uh, last year in Japan, uh, have a retrospectively analysis um, uh, data, uh, 28 are uh, robot PCI compared with the 35 uh, manual PCI and the clinical success rate is up to a 93, 94 uh, percentage and also operation radiation exposure is quite lower for the R PCI. And now in China, uh, just uh, like the uh, uh, chairman uh, and uh, Professor Xu Bo mentioned, uh, and uh, yeah, on the CIT, we uh, have uh, some uh, 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 live demo for the co-pass and quest success and also uh, published in China. And uh, uh, we now we have uh, two uh, equipments for the robotic, uh, uh, robotic uh, device and uh, totally guide wire, balloon stand, advance and retrieve, a special rotation and uh, put uh, 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 radiation protection. And R1, first uh, clinical trial uh, for the registration in China is November last year. And uh, for, uh, we have, uh, is, uh, this system have a biomedical uh, uh, technology of the two-handed uh, tracing uh, is so quite uh, useful. And uh, for the core pass, uh, have uh, advancing and uh, retrieving the guiding catheter. And uh, for the pivotal study, our study is uh, objective to evaluate the safety, clinical, and the technical performance of the robotic system for PCI. This uh, uh, I'm a leading leading PI is uh, prospectively from the full size and uh, a single arm, and uh, uh, totally is uh, want to evaluation of the R1 vascular intervention navigation uh, system. And uh, on schedule, uh, we uh, uh, want to uh, enroll the 149 patients and uh, clinical inclusion criteria is not so special. Uh, is the uh, lesion stenosis uh, more than 70% uh, and also ischemia driven uh, uh, for the PCI. And the major clinical exclusion uh, criteria, uh, uh, generally left man and uh, CTO, uh, fabrication, uh, severe culture vacation, and also a huge uh, vessel uh, like that. So um, the primary end point is clinical procedure success rate and the uh, device's technical success rate. And also secondary end point uh, include the radiation exposure, operation time, and equipment performance. Uh, this is a robot, uh, rob, uh, R1 in my case lab. And the operator sat behind the, the uh, 
heat and controlling the robotic concept, uh, concept, uh, by the jock stick and uh, the device, uh, including guideware balloon and the stand catheter are loaded in the stereo, uh, mm, system. And the uh, first uh, center start and first uh, patient enrolled uh, the November last year. And uh, uh, until now, almost 50% uh, samples enrolled uh, completely. And uh, uh, until now, we uh, have uh, 103 patients from the full size, method inclusion and uh, exclusion criteria. And uh, mm, totally seven, the, it's the basic uh, char uh, characteristics uh, of the patients. And uh, mm, the lesion is uh, homogeneously uh, 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 distribution. And uh, for the lesion classification, uh, it's uh, once uh, two third, uh, almost 26 percentage is uh, complex PCI. And uh, totally the the uh, size the size was a radio artery almost a uh, uh, ninety three percentage and the femoral artery uh, size uh, is only a uh, uh, six point eight percentage. I will want to show two cases. Uh, this is a cases is a right corner artery critical stenosis and also totters and the poor uh, co uh, uh, consecutivity. And uh, mm, first, uh, we uh, uh, ro uh, robotic uh, operate the guide wire getting through the lesion uh, and uh, control the first uh, wire. And then after that, because the quite tortures and uh, want to smoothly uh, implant the balloon and also stand, so put another wire. So uh, it's quite a smoothly and, uh, uh, and the success uh, uh, successfully, uh, uh, doing the procedure time is uh, 31 and why also with uh, quite lower, uh, exposure, uh, radiation exposure. So this is final result. And, uh, another, another one is, uh, uh, subtotal occlusion and the diffuse lung lesion. And also, uh, uh, is enable angina and, uh, B2 type, uh, lesion. And uh, also the the procedure time is uh, thirty two, and uh, this is uh, uh, the final result. It gives lung lesion. So we just want to uh, give our uh, comments for the R one vascular inter intervention uh, navigation system assist uh, robotic PCI. And now it's a uh, safe, uh, effective uh, with uh, many applications. Uh, actually, this uh, pivotal study is not uh, finished, so we just uh, show some uh, basic uh, characteristic uh, funding. And also, uh, enhanced precision of the device positioning may translate uh, clinical benefit and, uh, and also reduce uh, radiation exposure hazards. So, uh, be, and also result uh, affecting procedure performance and uh, patient safety. Uh, so thank you, uh, thank you for your uh, invitation and for your attention. Thank you. M many thanks. We've got time for a little discussion, and uh, that includes uh, uh, Bo. Uh, I've got a question to Yundai Chen. Um, really, you are really amassing an, 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 a great experience. Uh, um, there in terms of cases. If it came to practice, what, what kind of lesion is it you, you choose for a robot, robotic uh, procedure, and not, not say type A, just what kind of the more com advanced lesions can you use very easily now with robotics? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. And uh, yeah, uh, because we have only uh, not so much the uh, cases to experience, but uh, just uh, for the for my personal uh, experience, uh, for the um, for this kind of the robotic uh, device, uh, we uh, uh, have a very short learning curve. Generally, we only uh, two or three cases uh, if, uh, to be changed. Then you can uh, control everything uh, quite good. And, uh, for the, uh, lesion, uh, selected, uh, because for, uh, because this is a pre-marketing, uh, clinical trial. So, uh, for the exclusion, uh, criteria is quite, uh, uh, strictly. 
uh, uh, including the left man and bifurcation and the severe calcification CTO. But uh, in my uh, personal view, uh, for the quarters, a uh, very tortuous uh, uh, lesion and also diffuse lesion, uh, I think uh, because the uh, robotic uh, system uh, can uh, um, quite precising the positioning uh, is a, a millimeter positioning uh, for the uh, stand and the balloon. So, and also uh, the system, uh, the totalist uh, robotic system is uh, quite a, a secure positioning uh, uh, for to the lesion. Uh, because for the turtles, uh, when you uh, uh, through the wire and also to uh, push the stand or uh, long stand, this system is quite stable. And uh, also uh, R1 system have a, a, bio, a bionic, uh, bionic uh, technology with a two-handed uh, uh, twisting. That mm -hmm. means uh, can uh, 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 bionically uh, to like a uh, manual hand, uh, the pushing and the simultaneously twisting or rotating. So that is uh, quite a Quite a, uh, quite a, quite a, quite a skill. So that is my uh, personal view. Thank you. Um, okay. Is Shubo there? Yeah. Yes, I yeah. think you had a question, right? Yeah, and I actually, I have a comment. Uh, we, uh, honestly, we are hoping the robotic can do more complex procedures than our hu human operators. Uh, but actually, uh, the, the reality is that. But, uh, my my question is: What is the current status in Europe? I I, I if I understand correctly, the this uh, the live case, the first live case is uh, uh, at Europe PCR this year. Is uh, yep. such a case? Correct, uh, Xubo. And uh, um, I can tell you not only the live case that was presented as uh, at here at the Europe PCR uh, from Toulouse with the Air One. Um, also, uh, this morning at the hotline session, um, um, there was the air evolution uh, study presented. Uh, it was the first in human study here and done in Europe. Um, a single arm registry of 60 patients with the R1, um, uh, R1 robotic uh, device uh, showing um, in a rather simple population, simple uh, lesion complex uh, le uh, lesion population, showing an excellent results on 100% uh, clinical uh, um, uh, success, meaning no periperusal uh, events, or an even up to 30 days, no events, and um, uh, technical success, meaning uh, complete robotic uh, PCI procedure in 97%. And... Uh, 84 on average, if I recall, um, a reduction on dose. And I think that is really impressive to, to get those, those reductions with, with, with this um, strategy. Um, having said that, I think that the experience in Europe is quite limited. Um, there are only two devices so now. We uh, there are the R1, which is, um, uh, is already CE marked and is now um, uh, going on and penetrating the market. And we have also the Corindus device. Um, I see that it is gradually growing, the amount of sites in Europe. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what the future will be, specifically on the more complex lesions. Yeah, because I agree. I, I I, when I recall our uh, early experience uh, four years ago, the, uh, actually we only have 10 cases experience. But the last one, the 10th case, we did a life moon bifurcation to transmit to St. John Park's meeting. Beautiful. Yep. yep. Excellent. So, I mean, learning was... curve is a very acceptable. Yep. acceptable. So, um, if I may, may ask uh, um, um, uh, Chen, a question is, uh, well, you, you mentioned already that in China, the amount of PCI um, is increasingly rapidly. And, and, and you have, of course, one of the most pop, uh, populous uh, countries. What do you foresee as a future for robotic PCI in China? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Uh, because uh, more and more uh, cases will be performed by the physician. And also, uh, so the, I think the radiation uh, uh, exposure uh, for the physician, I think that should be a concern. Mm -hmm. uh, especially 
uh, if for the robotic uh, system can uh, instead of the manual PCI and uh, instead of the radiation exposure by the uh, for, uh, of the operator or the nurse or technician, I think that would be wonderful. And uh, also, uh, uh, I think uh, in the future, uh, if the the robotic system uh, can uh, update and also uh, uh, can uh, develop a more uh, mm, uh, uh, new technical and also uh, I think uh, should be uh, uh, have a very uh, uh, a nice uh, future in the in the in China. Thank you. We'll certainly will be watching you and uh, see where this goes. But it's it's very exciting, I think. Uh, we change tack and, and go on to the Firehawk stent in STEMI and hear the presentation of new data from Ling Tao. So can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. We can even see you. Yes, and uh, let me share my slides. So, uh, can you see my slides? Yes, please. All right. Okay, thank you for the invitation. And today uh, I'm going to, on behalf, so, uh, on behalf of Target STEMI OCT China uh, Steering Committee and investigators, I would like to report this uh, randomized comparison of kidney response between Firehawk stent and the science stents in STEMI patients at a six month follow up. And with, uh, this is an OCT study. So um, I have uh, received some grants and research support from Microport. And so first I need to uh, introduce uh, why we want to do this study. So we, we know that uh, this uh, biodegradable uh, polymer DS reduces inflammation or improves vascular uh, healing is still uh, debatable and depends on several factors. They uh, include strut thickness, polymer and drug density and illusion kinetics. And the Firehawk is, has a unique design. It has a lower drug and polymer density of uh, uh, this uh, biodegradable DS. And uh, in an all-commerce population, this target AC trial uh, shows Firehawk is non-inferior to science in terms of uh, target lesion failure of tail blocks. And also uh, target AC have OCT sub-study and demonstrated the Firehawk has similar vascular healing with science at three months. However, STEMI patients were excluded. And so this uh, target STEMI OCT China trial were, was to compare the OCT assessed neural intimal thickness of Firehawk versus science at six months in a STEMI population. So um, uh, Firehawk, as we said, it's, it's still, uh, have, it has similar uh, mat uh, metal material compared with uh, science and a similar strong thickness. And it has a bigger cell area uh, compared with science. And it has a unique polymer. It's a, a, a polyelectric acid, which is a bioresolvable uh, polymer. And it, it will degrade uh, among six to nine months. Uh, and the polymer thickness is 10 micrometer, but it's all in aluminum groove, and which is uh, can, uh, uh, control the, the, uh, the drug uh, release, uh, target release. And the drug sirolimers, 90% uh, will illusion at 90 days. And the drug density is very low, it's only uh, 0.3 microgram per uh, square millimeter compared with science. And we have, this is our major enrollment criteria. We, we include uh, the subjects more than eight years old STEMI within 12 hours of symptoms onset. Uh, we, subjects have, have at least one, uh, at least one de novo culpable lesion in a native coronary artery, uh, were uh, acute infected related artery and require primary PCI. 
and eject fraction more than 35%. Uh, reference diameter between 2.25 and 4 millimeter. And the target calculation length less than 100 uh, millimeter. And we need uh, successfully crossing the occlusion with scarred wire and uh, blue infl uh, inflammation that make the stent deployment feasible. And the exclu exclusion criteria, uh, uh, we, we include uh, the bypass, bypass graphs, buffication, uh, left, uh, left main disease, and also instant total occlusions. And uh, we, uh, we, we include uh, 40, uh, 44 patients in three sites in China and randomized uh, into Firehawk and the science group. And we have a primary endpoint uh, at a, si a six months OCT follow-up. And we have one month and 12 months clinical follow-up. The primary endpoint is a leo intimer sickness uh, in OCT at a six months. Safety endpoint, target lesion failure at 12 months. Uh, secondary endpoint also have a percentage of uncovered struts at six months by OCT. And the DAPT, we give uh, uh, DAPT uh, 12 months per guidelines. And uh, we, uh, 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 so estimate uh, the uh, real intimate sickness of science uh, was 100 micrometer. And we assume uh, no difference between two groups and the standard devi deviation of 45 micrometer for each group and a non-inferior margin 45 micrometer. And so with one-sided alpha 0.05 and the attrition rate 25%. So we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, statistical assumptions of a total of 44 randomized subjects will provide 85% power to demonstrate non-inferiority uh, using the t-test. So uh, here uh, we is our flow chart, and uh, 44 patients randomized to two groups. We have 21 in five group, uh, Firehawk, and 23 in science uh, group, and we have 19 uh, patients complete six months OCD follow up in Firehawk group and 100% of a patient completed 12 months clinical follow-up. Uh, we have 22 patients complete OCT uh, in a uh, science group and 100% complete clinical follow-up. So here, this is the baseline uh, uh, characteristics. And uh, the, we have a relatively young age, uh, so uh, about uh, 50 years old, for birth of groups. And we, uh, uh, among two groups, uh, has uh, no um, uh, difference. So regarding these uh, risk factors and also uh, the medicine. And for this uh, device, uh, we, we, ha uh, we have, uh, each patient have a, a 1.24, uh, the 1.2 uh, between 1.2 to 1.3 uh, stands per patient, and have similar uh, a patient, uh, similar rate of LAD and RCA, and we have uh, more more than 70 percent of patients with TME flow zero, and we have more than 50 percent of multivasal disease, and more than 80 percent of uh, lesion classification B2 and C. And we have uh, more than uh, we have uh, almost fifty percent of uh, patients with uh, thrombus aspi uh, aspiration. Uh, we have over fifty percent of complete revascularization, and a relatively low residual syntax score for the each of group. Uh, so here is our primary endpoint, and we have uh, a thirty-three um, micrometer in fire group and a set. Uh, almost uh, 79 in science, and uh, uh, we uh, know a uh, uh, difference compared with two groups, and also we meet the non-inferiority uh, criteria. Uh, and uh, so the uh, each group have over 90% of stand uh, coverage, a uh, stress uh, coverage uh, uh, percentage. So, um, uh, 
uh, in uh, male opposed the stress birth of group less than 0.2%, which is very low. And also uh, we, we have a, a pretty a low incident lead loss uh, of uh, each group. So in uh, Firehawk, uh, it's a 0.3 um, millimeter and in, uh, uh, it, uh, in a stand net loss. And in segment net loss also has no difference between two groups. And here is a, a essential re uh, result of a cumulative frequency distribution curve at six months of OCT result. Uh, we can see that uh, regarding meal interval sickness, uh, we have meet a uh, non-inferiority, uh, no difference between covered stress, uh, stress percentage, uh, low difference of, of incident lateral loss and in segment lateral loss. And here uh, we, we show the <laughs> each uh, uh, stance, uh, the OCT result of uh, representative OCT results of each uh, uh, patient. And uh, with a 100 micrometer uh, uh, co the color uh, change. So we, uh, we have a red uncovered struts and uh, purple male opposed struts, and which uh, is very low uh, in, uh, in each group. So um, at 12 months, only uh, one patient in the final group experienced a clinically uh, indicated target lesion revascularization, and no other target lesion failure or stem thrombosis events occur occurred in uh, both groups. So uh, this study, uh, we uh, 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 the essential to remember is uh, first the healing response of BIHOC. Uh, in STEMI patients still remains unclear. So, uh, and so that's why Firehawk biodegradable polymer DS was evaluated in this uh, STEMI population in China. And the primary endpoint of uh, neo-intimal sickness assessed by OCT have more than 85 power to demonstrate non-inferiority to science at six months. And Firehawk was non-inferior to the science state in, term of, in terms of neo-intimal sickness um, and meet a non-inferiority. And in patients with STEMI, Firehawk was non-inferior uh, to science in vascular healing at six months. Both stents uh, exhibited nearly complete strut coverage and moderate neo-intimal formation and the minimal strut male position. Uh, so uh, that's... Uh, uh, my uh, uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that, that's a wonderful presentation. Um, one of the questions would, would be, why did you do a study in, in STEMI with the Firehawk? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a very important question. And uh, first, we all know that the target AC uh, shield uh, published in two, two, uh, 2018 and showed a uh, very uh, good results compared with uh, Firehawk and uh, Science. And it, it shows a similar uh, calculation failure and also uh, the OCT sub subgroup uh, at six months should also uh, all, almost complete a strut coverage at, a, at a six, a three months, but uh, not include a STEMI patient. So I think uh, it's still uh, very important to explore this uh, Firehawk, uh, the stand design, because this uh, stand is de designed to balance the risk diagnosis and uh, uh, also the vascular healing. Uh, so because uh, it has still a lower uh, anti-proliferative drug, but uh, uh, still effective. And so if we want to show that uh, if this stand it also has a very excellent uh, performance in STEMI patient, especially for uh, vascular healing. I think it's, uh, it's uh, uh, still um, need to uh, perform this OCT study and to show the evidence uh, that uh, this stent is also uh, has a very good vascular healing at uh, six months uh, in STEMI patients. I think it's important. Fantastic. Yeah, I always wanted to do that study. Um, I totally agree. Um, a question for Peter. Uh, target STEMI OCT, it, it, it's conducted in, in China, but we know we have some studies uh, elsewhere. Can you give us an update on 
Yes, we. Uh, uh, yeah. but I think maybe we, I, I can. Uh, I no. can share the Honey, no, Tony, uh, no. Uh, that's uh, so that that's Peter Smith. We want uh, to answer. Peter. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. But um, if I can have the first slide, uh, maybe from um, from um, uh, from your presentation, um, because your study is a kind of a good pre-study for the target first study that we are now conducting here in Europe. It's an uh, international. We don't see the slides yet. Can we have the slides? Yeah, I will show you the slides. I will oh, show you. That's a truly no. global presentation now. Yeah, I'll sh <laughs> sorry. Let me let me share the slides again. Can can you see the slides? Not yet. If you can oh, share it. Sorry, sorry. Let me see. I need to. Sh Why don't you just talk us? Yeah, through? well, I can already introduce you to the trial. Darlene, it's okay. Let's just introduce the trial. Huh? I will. Okay. I will introduce okay. you to the trial. It's an international. Well, it's an European randomized clinical trial evaluating the 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 um, an shortened DAPT, um, a shortened antiplatelet therapy strategy with Sophia Hochstand in acute MI patients, and also with a complete revascularization strategy. Ah. The, no, yeah, we got. The, I think we got the slides. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is the background. Well, we all know that um, acute MI has an increased thrombotic risk, and therefore we give prolonged DPT. Um, well, we all know that prolonged DPT is is has a, has a has kind of a balance. You, you know, on, on, the, on one hand, we limit uh, ischemic risk. On the other hand, you have an increased bleeding risk. And, and we all know that even bleeding risk is associated with a worse outcome and and, more, and higher mortality. We also know that nowadays from the complete trial that complete resuscitation is the preferred strategy in multivessel STEMI patients. And we also know from other trials like the Twilight and the TICO and the Master DPT that a shorted DPT regimen, uh, even in ACS patients, um, um, uh, have benefit for, for reducing the bleeding risk and having the same ischemic risk when you, in compared to a standard DPT regimen. So the target first more or less extends on this uh, reduction of uh, DPT, of antiplatelet therapy regimens in acute MI patients. So low to moderate risk um, acute MI patients were, are going to be randomized at one month and will re after they have received complete resuscitation with the firehawk stand and after one month uh, P2 Y12 monotherapy will be started. So this is the next slide, yes, perfect. So it is a population of, um, of 2,100 non-STEMI and STEMI patients uh, that will have successful and complete visualization with the Firehawk stand within seven days in them, uh, that has to complete visualization has to be done within seven days after the index procedure. And if they are event-free, they are at one month randomized towards an experimental arm, meaning stopping an, um, aspirin and continuing um, a P2 by 12 in, in, um, a P2 by 12 inhibitor uh, up to 12 months, compared to the standard regimen of 12 months DPT. The primary endpoint is NACE, that's the composite of all cause death, MI, definite uh, and probable stent thrombosis, stroke, and major uh, bleeding bark three or five. The secondary uh, um, endpoint is uh, is bark two, three, and five bleeding, and which we look hopeful, uh, where we hope for superiority with the experimental arm. If you can have the next slide, so this study is ongoing. Um, 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 so we aim at 2,246 patients in total in six countries and 40 sites. On the on the bottom, you see a kind of a dashboard of the current st status. You can see that we are in enrollment. We are over 25% of our enrollment, and, and and that all countries nicely contribute to the study. We have a good contribution of France. What is nice to show on the, on, the, on the right is that the amount of STEMI patients and non-STEMI patients is equally divided, and that uh, the patient receiving a P2I12 receptor blocker mostly received ticagolor, and in the, in the majority in uh, prasugel and a very small portion clopidogrel. So this is the um, um, what I would like to show to you on the target first study. That is ongoing. Thank you very much. So these were the new ones, target OCT, STEMI, target first. Uh, to wrap it up, I can report on target AC. It has been mentioned, the uh, study that randomized in all comers um, uh, the Firehawk uh, 
stent uh, versus the science. We've just completed the five-year follow-up and that should be presented at the ESC. That's a very interesting, very long-term uh, data. With that, we move on and we go into valves now. So it's a pleasure to introduce Mao Chen, uh, who really doesn't need an introduction, and he will talk about vita flow in severe aortic stenosis and again, five-year clinical outcomes. Mao Chen. Uh, dear Chairman, uh, dear experts, uh, this is Dr. Ah. Zhao from China. Uh, since Dr. Chen has some problem with the internet connection, I will present in this topic on his behalf. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, present the five-year clinical outcomes of the microport vital flow tavel system in patients with uh, uh, Chinese patients with uh, severe aortic stenosis. And both of us ha has no uh, potential conflicts of interest. <clears throat> Uh, the vital flow uh, aortic valve is a bovine pericardial uh, valve uh, with anti-calcification uh, treatment. And the important feature is that uh, this valve has double uh, PET skirts uh, for better sealing. Uh, it's a self-expanding nitinal frame, for, uh, uh, nitinal frame um, and uh, uh, the valve uh, has low density cells, uh, which allow for easy coronary access. Uh, and at the inflow end, uh, there is uh, higher density cells, uh, which uh, <clears throat> uh, in enforce uh, the radial strength of this valve uh, and uh, allow the treatment in a calcified and bicuspid aort aortic valve. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this is a superannular uh, leaflet, uh, leaflets. And there are four uh, valve sizes available. Uh, they are 21, 24, 27, and 30 millimeter. Uh, the delivery system uh, is a key feature uh, for this device. Uh, it's a uh, there is a motorized handle and uh, therefore it's uh, easy to use and uh, allow for easy wire manip manipulation during deployment. And this study uh, is uh, actually the pre-market uh, clinical trial of the uh, vital flow valve and the uh, major objective is to evaluate the safety and the effectiveness uh, of the vital flow valve and uh, its delivery system in patients with uh, symptomatic aortic stenosis. Um, and uh, this study uh, enrolled a total of 110 patients. And all patients uh, were followed up uh, at 30 days, 6 months, uh, 12 months, and uh, uh, up to 5 years after TARVR. Uh, and the primary endpoint is all-cause mortality as at uh, one year. Uh, and the second endpoints include uh, device success, procedural success, major stroke uh, valve and valve performance, uh, and also the improvement of heart function uh, and the uh, uh, MACE improvement of quality of life uh, were also recorded. And the principal investigator uh, is uh, uh, Zhongshan Hospital, and uh, uh, there are three uh, co-PI hospitals, uh, including West China Hospital, the second affiliated hospital of Zhejiang University School of Medicine, and the uh, uh, Beijing Fuwai Hospital. Uh, and uh, Dr. Nicolo Piazza uh, uh, act as the CD core laboratory. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, the five-year uh, outcome data is available, and this is uh, the baseline characteristics of uh, patients enrolled in this study. Uh, the main age uh, of the patients are 77.7 uh, uh, years old, and the mean SDS score is 8.8. .8. Uh, and these patients have uh, um, 
comorbidities, including uh, hypertension, uh, peripheral vascular disease, uh, uh, COPD, uh, renal insufficiency, uh, etc. And uh, uh, an important um, characteristic of this study is that uh, it, it includes patients with bicuspid aortic valve and the pen and uh, uh, 42 uh, out of uh, 110 patients have a bicuspid uh, morphology. And uh, the uh, mean aortic valve gradient uh, at base baseline is 16 millimeters of mercury. And uh, mostly uh, this uh, type of procedure are performed uh, by the transfemoral approach and the implanted valve size um, uh, include um, include uh, about sixty percent with uh, twenty four millimeters uh, valve size, and thirty one percent of patients uh, were implanted with a twenty seven millimeters uh, size. And following the procedure, uh, there there was uh, striking hemodynamic improvements. Uh, the mean pressure gradient uh, decreased from uh, 60 millimeters of mercury to uh, 8.7 millimeters of mercury. And the aortic valve <coughs> orifice area increased from uh, 0 0.6 uh, to uh, 1.8 uh, squared centimeters. Uh, and uh, uh, up to one year, uh, those hemodynamic, hemodynamic parameters uh, remained stable. Uh, and uh, uh, after the procedure, uh, the patient, uh, about 70% uh, of patients have none or only trace uh, paravalvular leak. Uh, and uh, uh, about 30 patients have a mild paravalvular leak and also uh, this uh, data remains stable uh, at one year follow up. Uh, at uh, five year follow up, um, the all cause mortality of this group of patients uh, is 18.2%, uh, and cardiovascular mortality is 8.2%. Uh, uh, all cause all stroke uh, incidence is 13.6%. Uh, uh, percent and major stroke uh, is about two percent. Uh, major uh, vascular complication um, at five year follow up is uh, two point seven percent, and uh, uh, new pacemaker uh, implantation uh, incidence uh, increased uh, from uh, fifteen point five uh, at discharge uh, to twenty percent at five year. Uh, since this, uh, this study included patients uh, with bicuspid aortic valve, uh, therefore um, we are able to assess uh, the comparative results of um, Tarver in bicuspid versus tricuspid aortic stenosis. Uh, from this table, uh, we can see that uh, bicuspid patients included uh, are generally younger, uh, two years, uh, two years uh, uh, younger than tricuspid um, patients. Uh, and the, the SDS score uh, is uh, uh, a little bit uh, lower than uh, tricuspid patients. Uh, the SDS, mean SDS score is 7.4 uh, in the bicuspid group and 9.7 in the tricuspid group. Uh, and this is because uh, the bicuspid patients uh, have the uh, uh, generally uh, less comorbidities uh, compared with uh, the, the tricuspid cohort. Uh, and uh, uh, with regard to the uh, hemodynamic parameters, uh, bicuspid patients uh, have uh, more severe uh, aortic stenosis at baseline. Um, this is uh, demonstrated by the higher mean aortic valve gradient. Uh, which is uh, 64 millimeters of mercury for the bicuspid group and uh, uh, 58 uh, millimeters of mercury uh, for the tricuspid cohort. Uh, uh, 
uh, there is uh, actually no significant difference uh, between the five-year mortality uh, between the bicuspid and tricuspid uh, patient group. Uh, and uh, at five years, um, the all-cause mortality is 17.6% uh, for the bicuspid group and 19% uh, for the tricuspid group. And uh, uh, with regard to cardiovascular mortality, uh, the, bi the bicuspid group uh, has uh, uh, low, relatively lower incidence uh, compared with the tricuspid group, uh, but uh, there is no uh, statistical st significance uh, between the groups. Uh, and uh, also, uh, there is no significant difference uh, between the two groups uh, with regard to the five-year stroke uh, incidence. The aortic valve uh, performance uh, are also comparable between the groups. And, uh, 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 but uh, uh, for this, uh, this data, uh, the uh, complete data is uh, are only available uh, for uh, one year follow up. So, in conclusion, um, tower using the vital flow device uh, is associated with low all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality rate at five year follow up. The all cause mortality rate at five year follow up is 18.2%, and the cardiovascular mortality rate. Uh, at five year follow up is 8.2%. And uh, importantly, there is no significant difference between clinical outcomes of bicuspid and tricuspid aortic stenosis patients. Uh, and uh, this uh, five year clinical outcome data uh, support the safety and the efficacy of the uh, microport vital flow in the treatment of patients with severe aortic, aortic stenosis, uh, including both uh, tricuspid or bicuspid anatomy. So that's all for the presentation. Thanks very much. Th thank you very much. I, I think it's amazing that you get you know, you know, that quality five-year data and the data speak for themselves. Um, so. I've got only one practical question. I think we've got Shubo as well uh, for the final uh, five minutes of discussion time. Hi there, Shubo. Um, yeah. my, my question uh, over to you is you have so many bicuspids, many more than in Europe. Um, is there any difference in the treatment? Because they're, they're probably you know, younger or older. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Is, do, do, do you treat them differently? Because the results seem to be the same? Yeah, I think uh, our Chinese uh, operators team have uh, their several special techniques for treating bicuspid AS patient, uh, including the Mountain team and the Hangzhou team, and also Fuai team and Zhongshan Hospital. Uh, probably Ling also has a lot of experience. But in general, we can see a uh, uh, difference in baseline characteristic between bicuspid and tricuspid aortic stenosis. But uh, I'm very uh, confident or very excited to see today's data. Uh, actually, I want to congratulate the uh, Mao Chen, Zheng Gao, and the entire Vita Flow research team for beautifully conducting such a long term follow up. This uh, long term data, durability data, uh, support the use of uh, a vital flow for treating uh, a bicuspid aortic stenosis patient. This is my personal opinion. Uh, Andres, I wonder if you can show us a little bit about the, the, the picture of in Europe, how, how, as you have many data, durability data, how do you treat uh, bicuspid AS patient? Huh. That's, that's actually, you know, that's a whole session at, at PCR London Wolves coming up for you. I, I think durability first is very important and to show that a valve is durable is, is, is the basic uh, uh, in the future. Um, and l there's a new word that, that comes in and that is lifetime management. We, we see younger patients, we see those bicuspids, uh, they may not need just one valve. So there's a lot of aspects 
uh, that come into into the treatment there. Um, it's it's becoming rather interesting. So it's it's far away from the initial. Let's just put a Tavi into a 85 year old. Um, we are going down the 75 or younger uh, patient route, and we have to be aware that these valves need to a last long, uh, and and uh, maybe may endure uh, more uh, procedures afterwards. So that's my summary, and I think now they're gone. <laughs> And uh, that nicely leads us to Peter, who will wrap us up. Huh? Yeah, it's always the task of somebody who has to make a kind of a summary. Well, I think we have a very interesting session today, with we uh, have an update on three products from Microport. First, we have an update on the R1 study on 103 patients done in China, and in rather simple lesions uh, so far. Uh, I think we should expect um, more data coming out of this study, but also from future studies on more complex lesions to see what is the value for robotic PCI in our daily practice. Second, we saw some nice uh, results from the OCT uh, STEMI population, and o o STEMI population that was investigated by OCT at six months with the Firehawk stand. Very reassuring data where they could see a good healing effect um, at six months by OCT on the Firehawk stand. And, um, and which also gave a kind of an introduction to the target first study that we are currently conducting in Europe with a abbreviated uh, DPT regimen at only one month DPT followed by a single antiplatelet therapy with a P2Y12 receptor blocker. And then we have the, at last the, the, the fighter flow five year clinical data. I think very interesting to see the five year data, very good um, five year um, data, very favorable data, I may, might say, and very interesting to see no differences in, in the tricuspic and the bicuspic valve implantations patient. So that is really a, a beautiful signal. Um, and um, having said that, I think we can conclude that we have the have a nice, had a nice session with a contrib good contribution from China, and uh, even when it is already there, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the evening. It's a bit late. It's now. really late. Yeah. It's also good for us <laughs> to go. go to okay, bed. thank you.